Welcome to another episode of the Understanding Crypto series by Thomas Plunkett. Today we're going to dive into um, another Ethereum security uh, technique and an anti-pattern to avoid that's referred to as arithmetic uh, overflows and underflows. Uh, these slides and this video are available in a Creative Commons. All right, so let's talk about the uh, mathematical overflow and underflow anti-pattern. So the Ethereum virtual machine specifies fixed size data types for integers. You know, we've used examples of unsigned integers, UNs, and so forth uh, throughout some of the other Solidity examples I've shown uh, in these videos. So what does it mean to say you have a fixed size data type? This means that an integer variable can represent only a certain range of numbers. For example, an unsigned integer eight can only store numbers in the range from 0 to 255. You know, it represents 8 bits. 8 bits can go from 1 to 256, or in this case, from 0 to 255. So trying to store, um, if we actually wanted to store the literal number 256 into an unsigned int that begins with 0, we actually roll over to, uh, so when you store 256, you actually roll over to the beginning, and you actually get 0 stored in your unsigned int. So if you don't aren't careful, variables in Solidity can be exploited if the user input is unchecked and calculations are performed that result in numbers that lie outside the range of the data type that stores them. Um, you know, these uh, numerical vulnerabilities allow the attacker to misuse the code and create unexpected logic flows. Um, you know, for example, um, you know, typically when we talk about the vulnerability, we say that an overflow or an underflow occurs when an operation is performed that requires a fixed size number to store a number that's outside the range of that variable's data type. So, for example, here we show, you know, adding 257 to an unsigned int, and that results in uh, number one. Um, if, if our original value is zero, if we subtract one from zero, we go backwards to 255. So subtracting and going backwards underneath it is called an underflow. Going over the maximum is called a, an overflow. Um, and the, the, the only difference between underflow and overflow is which direction you're wrapping. If you're wrapping below the range, we call it an underflow. If you're wrapping above the range, we call that an overflow. And you can think of this as being kind of like an odometer in a car. You know, in the old days with mechanical odometers, uh, where they only had six digits, 999, 999, uh, once someone uh, had a car for a really long time and it went up to a million, um, they actually went to start their odometer turned over and started at zero. Uh, resetting to zero. Nowadays, with uh, electronic odometers, they're not necessarily restricted to six digits. But in the old days of cars in the 70s and 80s, that was a real problem. Um, in the case of signed integer types, which can represent negative numbers, then the underflow or overflow simply starts with the largest negative value. So for example, uh, the signed integer eight is just int eight. And so its range is minus 128 to positive 127. So again, if you tried to store a number of 128, that number 128 would actually roll over and become negative 128. Um, so these uh, sorts of numerical gotchas allow attackers to misuse code and create a lot of unexpected logic flows. So here's an example, uh, a very simple example of how this could happen in a real contract. So here we've got a basic token contract. Um, you know, it's an ERC-20 contract and it's got a mapping um, that most ERC-20 contracts have where we map the balances of the tokens to a particular address. Um, so we use an unsigned integer to represent the number of tokens that this address has. And by default in Solidity, everything starts with zero. So if you haven't actually bought any tokens yet, uh, your balance for this address is a zero, basically. All right, now let's suppose that we are going to do a transfer function. And we're going to transfer uh, one token to this address. So we pass in an address. Here we call it XYZ, and we pass in one. All right. Now our balance is does message sender minus value greater than or equal to zero. Value is going to be zero minus one, which leads to 255. So I'm trying to transfer 
um, a token, but all of a sudden I've rolled over and now I'm going to have a balance being 255 and my value is going to be 255 because I didn't have any tokens to transfer. So this is just one example of, you know, something going wrong and because you're getting you're getting uh, inputs and outputs that you're not checking. And so our solution is going to be let's check the inputs and outputs to make sure we don't overrun the range. Um, and there are some very good mathematical libraries that replace the standard Ethereum math operators uh, for addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Uh, OpenZep, one in particular, uh, created a very nice safe math library, but you can also do your own code uh, relatively straightforward. So for example, I have this little equation here. We want to do an addition, C equals A plus B. And, our, and we assume that as a precondition, A, B, C are all unsigned positive integers. So how do we ensure that we don't run into an overflow or an underflow? Well, we could do simple, something as simple as this line of code right here, right after the addition. We assert that the sum of C uh, equals A plus B is going to be greater than or equal to A. And it's going to throw an exception if C is now less than A. So, um, you know, so, you know, if B is zero, it's okay that A plus B equals C. I mean, but, uh, I mean, if B is zero, it's okay that A equals C. But, you know, A should never go below C. And if it went below C, then we had an, an overflow or an underflow, and therefore we're throwing an exception. So doing something really simple like that, one extra line of code can solve this problem. Uh, but like I said, the Open Zeppelin library for safe math puts in a lot of protections uh, that can help avoid overflow and underflow uh, vulnerabilities. So you might ask, okay, if one line of code could solve this problem, would anyone have really made this error? Well, yeah, people have. Um, here's a couple of examples of relatively famous <laughs> overflow and underflow hacks. The uh, proof of weak hands coin was uh, originally designed, uh, designed as a joke of sorts, but a lot of money got invested in that joke. Um, and they lost $800,000 due to an overflow con uh, error that they had left in their contract. Um, and I'll show you uh, a quick look at the link uh, here, but there's a Medium post uh, by Eric talking about how 800 code evaporated from the proof of weak hands coin. And another example came from the implementation of a batch transfer function in a number of different ERC-20 token contracts. The implementation contained an overflow vulnerability that a security company named PeckShield spotted uh, that then again uh, made a number of ERC-20 contracts vulnerable. Uh, let's go take a quick look at some of those uh, issues. So here is our batch overflow bug uh, that PeckShield spotted back in 2018. Um, they created an automated system to scan and analyze Ethereum-based token transfers. And they noticed um, a beauty coin token transfer that had a massive amount of number of tokens. I mean, look at how many zeros were in that tokens. 63 zeros. Uh, because again, it was an overflow uh, or an underflow. And yeah, it was a batch overflow. And so here we go. And here they're showing the vulnerability in the batch transfer function. Uh, more than a dozen ERC-20 contracts that they found that were vulnerable to this particular vulnerability. Um, and they have reached out to talk to them. But again, there's no real good way to uh, fix those contracts without redeploying the contracts. Um, so they walk through some of the examples. And here again is another look at the uh, exploitation of the Pico proof of weak hands coin where they lost 866 Ethereum due to a, a, a overflow. Um, this particular contract was pretty short and you can see here they have their transfer uh, from function that was exploited. Um, and here we've got the transfer tokens. It actually has the vulnerability. Transfer from calls transfer tokens and transfer tokens doesn't have the uh, safety math elements that we talked about. Um, and again, I'm not gonna go through all the details of how that was, this was exploited and someone lost 866 of ETH, which back then wasn't worth that much. It was only worth uh, 800K. 
but it could have been more uh, today, obviously, because ETH is now, uh, you know, into uh, today, that would be, you know, $4 million or more. Um, so that's just a quick look at two of these examples of how people lost real money uh, through failure to just put a little more time and effort into their security uh, when they were working on their Ethereum security. Um, so tune in next time when we'll dive deeper into Ethereum security issues and how to secure your smart contracts so you won't lose millions of dollars to someone hacking your code because you forgot one line of code.